Hello and welcome to another episode of the Carp Zone. I'm Andy and this is Neen Valley Fisheries. It's in uh, Rushton, North Hants, and uh, we're here for three days. It's uh, part of a six lake complex uh, and three of them lakes actually date back 60 years. Uh, they're all gravel pits. Uh, three of them are actually open now for fishing, uh, day tickets that is. And um, some of the fish in here actually go up in excess of 40 pounds. So, uh, Fingers crossed it'll be nice to bank one of them lumps today. But uh, the weather, uh, the weather's been lovely today. A few clouds, but apparently the weather's gonna come in tonight. Gonna start with uh, some heavy rain and it's gonna last for the next two days. So uh, just making most of the weather, um, getting out. So we'll just have to see how the session goes and hopefully, as I say, fingers crossed, we'll uh, try and get a few fish out for you. While waiting for a fish, just talk you through uh, the rig, one of the rigs that I'm using. Uh, because it's quite silty, decided to uh, use solid PVA bags. Um, so basically if it does sit down onto the silt, it'll just go down nice and soft and it'll actually sit on top of the weed and leave a nice presentation for the hook bait. The hook bait I've got uh, soaking in uh, Activate oil. Uh, and on this I've, topped, I've just topped it with a little pink piece of corn uh, it's a nice pop up, pops up about three inches and that should just give it a really good presentation um, from the rest of the free offerings around it and hopefully be the uh, first one to be picked up uh, what I'll do though, I will show you the bag dissolving in the water and show you the presentation that it offers in the mix I've got a Cloud 9, mainline Cloud 9 and I've also got some bloodworm pellet and also some uh, normal pellet in there. So I've got red bloodworm pellet, normal pellet and cloud nine. And I say I've just topped it off with a nice bit of uh, pink corn as well. I'm gonna put a few free offerings in as well. Um, four or five of them. Okay, so I'm gonna put my up bait in first and then on top of that, once I've loaded that up, I'm gonna just put in the bomb at the top, make sure everything goes in there. As I say, when it goes in, it'll just sink a lot softer, a lot, a lot gentler onto the bed, and it doesn't sink in as much. So, as I say, the bait itself is actually presentable. The other, well, the other thing as well worth mentioning, what a few people don't do with these bags, is once you've made the bag up and nice and solid, just give it a few um, piercings all around the bag, just to make sure it leaks, and it just goes down nice and slow. So. I say there, I've got, I've got the bag there, just going to uh, make it nice and neat. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is pat down the corners. Okay, and then I'm going to just work my finger on there. Just hold that down. So on this side. Okay. Give it a good twist. Some people use string to tie it up. Um, generally, if I get this out the fast enough, um, just twisting it and wetting it generally does the trick. So let's get this bait out now and uh, let's see if it brings any luck to us. Right, 
Right, we're just going to have a cup of tea now, and then we're going to go down a couple of swims down the bank to speak to Lewis Clayton, as you might know, he's the Northwest Carp Angler, and go to see what methods he's using. Right, okay, well, um, we're joined with Lewis Clayton, he's a prolific Northwest uh, Carp Angler, had some fantastic results on uh, Reeds May. Uh, but he also writes for uh, Carp Talk now and again, I believe. Uh, um, I've done a bit for David Hall Publishing in the past, mainly advanced carp fishing. Um, I do a little bit for Carp Talk, to be quite honest with you, I don't tend to do that much. Um, it's just a case of, if I catch something that hopefully people might find interesting, I'll write about it as opposed to writing the same old stuff week in, week out about this is a knotless knot and this is how you set up a marker rod, because at the end of the day, I think there's enough out there now in magazines on the internet um, by far better anglers than myself so why would you want to read how to set up a marker rod by me when Terry Ian's covered it you know people like that it's a simple case of I just write what I think that hopefully people might find interesting so hopefully they do right well you've also uh, come back from the sanctuary of you in France yeah I was at the sanctuary um, at the back end of last year I think well, it's November time now, cracking place uh, in the Cher region of France. I've been fortunate enough to fish there twice now. Um, it's run by a friend of mine, Adam Entwistle. Um, NC's a fantastic angler and a top all around bloke as well. Um, he's got a cracking fishery there with some fantastic fish. I was lucky enough to have some of the better ones. The biggest one being 59, 14, uh, 350s, a couple of 40s. 59, odd. 50, where uh, everyone's going, well, you bothered it wasn't a 60, but at the end of the day, what's a couple of ounces? It's the same fish. Yeah, yeah. I'll have yeah. to see some pictures of that for sure, but uh, I've just been watching uh, Lewis as well he, with the tactics he's been using. Uh, do you want to run through exactly what, what I've just seen there? Just, just basically how he's put his bait in. Uh, and how he's presented it. Yeah, well, we're down here today at Neen Valley Fisheries. I've never been before, I know nothing about it. I've turned up blind this morning. It was minus four when I got here. Um, it's been high pressure all day, very sunny. The fish have been bobbing about in these pads here behind us. I don't know if you can see them, um, but very edgy there where they've been obviously close in. People coming past, cars coming past. Um, now, I had a bream after about half an hour after chucking in. Now, the main thing I've done because I've not want, wanted to thrash the water to a foam, we've got a lad fishing over on the point here on the far side, and we fish in a similar kind of area. The worst thing you can do, or the worst thing that you can have done to you, is to be fishing nice and quiet, be on fish, and then some idiot turns up and proceeds to fly fish for the next three hours. So I was conscious I didn't want to do that. Um, so I've just chucked out a single, um, a little snowman rig, and as I say, I've had a bream within about half an hour. Now, fortunate here because we're fishing um, on a causeway. We've got the big lake behind us as well. Jay's given us permission to put a rod in there, and I've got two in here. Um, so hopefully, you know, there's a chance, a chance of a fish. This lake hasn't really switched on as yet so far this year, Jay tells me, but this lake's done quite a few fish. Um, been, see been seeing fish out in front of me, I've had a few show. Like I say, didn't want to thrash the water to a foam. Wasn't exactly sure what to go with, so I've just gone with what I know basically and why I have confidence in. I'd say the only difference that I've done, um, because I've not obviously had a marker rod out there, I don't know the makeup of the bottom. Um, I noticed the lad over the other side was fishing a chod type style rig. I imagine it's popular on here because there's a lot of silkweed. I've gone for something hopefully that's slightly different. Um, I've just gone for some longer hook links, braided hook links, some ESP sync link, which is something I rate and I use a lot of. Um, so the hook link's probably about this long, with a bag on to keep them up out of the weed. Fishing a snowman rig again. Um, the weed's not too bad; it's just silk weed, really. Um, it's early in the year, and it's you know it's not really got up. But what I didn't want to do um, was chuck something out there and reel it in and find it's tangled. So the fact I've had a bream, hopefully fish finding the presentation okay um, that's out in open water I've got a spot down here to the right close in I've got five foot under a bush now again there's a little bit of silkweed so what I've gone for um, I've gone for a particle mixture I've gone for a stack rig that I'm using there because as I say I have had a bream the lad on the other side's had a bream so 
I don't want to be up at 3 o'clock in the night with a bream. Hopefully it'll be a carp if I ever take. So I've got a stack rig there. Quite a mouthful for a bream to take, but as we all know, they're capable of doing it. Um, so I flicked it out close in. Slat lines, no lead core. I've got putty up the line, sinking the line. Um, I'm using some very fine line. I think it's some three pound Drenham match line. When all I've done, looked it over the line. It's what they were doing 40 years ago. Um, put some, a couple of lead shots on. In, in essence, it's a bat lead that I've just slid down the line just to keep the line down. But obviously, I don't want to use a conventional bat lead because I've got a load of weed in front of me. So I don't want to obviously clog the line up. Thank you very much, Liz, for sharing that with us. Hope that uh, you use it in your fishing. It's, uh, it's starting to get a bit dark now, so uh, I think we should get the rods out and uh, settle down for the night. Well, it's about 10 o'clock now, starting to get our heads down. Brilliant to see uh, Lewis before, it's all through the bait and stuff. Uh, Paul's had a couple of knocks on his left hand rod, uh, so hopefully. That's going to rip off at any minute, so uh, we'll have to wait and see. Just waiting for this rain to start, which apparently is going to be an absolute downfall tonight, so uh, complete different day tomorrow, maybe. So, anyway, that's it for now. Well, good morning. It's, uh, it's not the fish I was hoping to be woke up by. Uh, had another bream in the night. Also, Paul's uh, been plagued by a couple of bream as well. Uh, but the fish seems to be biting, so hopefully we'll try and get a, a carp out today. Right, it's about 12 o'clock now, just having a quick brew. Uh, no more action as yet, uh, well no more bream. Uh, Lewis had three bream out in the night though, uh, but no carp unfortunately. On the main lake, um, a fish came out about 5 o'clock this morning, 18 pounder, and apparently there's no fish been out for a while, so uh, well done to that lad for jumping on there. Uh, but Paul's actually gone around to the other side of the lake to uh, go and have a chat with one of the locals who's had quite a few fish out of this lake, and uh, who should be able to give us a few hints and tips about fishing it. Right, well, we're on the other side of the lake now, talking to Stuart, one of the more better anglers that fish the water. Uh, welcome to the Carp Zone, Stuart. Yeah, I'm fine, thanks. Um, can you tell us what fish you've had from here in the length of time you've been fishing it? Well, I mean, this particular lake, this is, this is really the first sort of crack I've had of it this season. Um, I've only had a couple of sessions down here. Um, most of my fishing done last year was done on the lake in the back there, the main lake. Right. Um, large windswept water, a little bit different from this one. Um, had some good fish on there. The best one I had was a Mira 3113. Um, some nice backup 20s. And particularly nice scaly fish that came out. Um, and a few, few upper doubles that come out as well. So basically what, what would you say was uh, a guesstimate side? Would you say they went in, to in the back lake? In the main lake? Um, it, it's hard to know in there. There's rumours of fish that sort of pushing 40 pounds that have come from it over the years. Right. But again, it's such a sort of untapped venue. Well, nobody knows it's No one really knows. No one knows. Uh, the one thing for certain is there's fish in there from a few pounds, certainly up to sort of mid 30s. But yeah. beyond that, anyone's guess, you know. What have you done out of this lake? Um, nothing so far. Right. <laughs> I'll say this is my third trip down, my second trip I lost a fish. Um, so up until now, other than Bree. It's one of them waters where you can't just turn up, you've got to really come you, down. You really need to come down and sort of it. work on it, yeah, yeah, definitely so. Well, basically, if you're coming down for a 24 hour, 48 hour session like me and Andy have done, yeah. what tips and advice could you give to a person that's coming down on the first time like that? Um, biggest thing, first of all, is come down here and have a watch of the water. Early mornings, late thing, last thing in the evening is the time to be here. Oh, we sat last night watching them just before dark, yeah. won't be yeah. in the middle of the lake putting their heads out and that, but nothing came during the night. It's definitely the one you've got to be here then. You know, find out whether you're on fish or not. Certainly on this little lake they do show themselves a bit more. Right. On, on the main lake over the back, they tend to be a little bit more um, preserved. Oh, they don't, don't show themselves quite as much. On the bait side of things, what would you recommend on bait? Anything that you're uh, it's, confident in? It's the standard red fish meals on here that seem to do well. Most right. people seem to be catching on, on similar type baits. Either red fish meals or, or sort of pop-ups that derive from them. Right, what would um, you talk about on the rig side of it and 
I found a lot of silkweed out on Yeah, definitely, definitely. Most of the bottom is covered in silkweed, so you're looking at methods to combat that, either sort of pop-ups, maybe chod rigs, um, longer hook lengths, sort of balanced baits. Well, I'm fishing the chods at the moment, yep. and I've got mine set like six, seven inches up the, lot, up the lead core, yep. just to keep it up, up out of the top last week, because it is snotty stuff, isn't it? It is, yeah, definitely. And, and a lot of it's a confidence thing. You'll well, probably find that whatever you cast out there, it'll yeah. come back masked one way or another. Well, whichever way you look, unless you feel it all, can, would it be worth putting it all inside solid PVA? I've, I've, actually, I've actually fished one rod last night on a, on a stick. Right. So, just again, it's that variation. Treading on, onto the hook length. Treading onto the hook length, or quick length, short hook length, sort of like five inch hook length. Yeah. Um, What's that bait for just for the you know it's going to go in, it's not going to be massive. Just confidence, and it's a different thing as well. The thing with these lakes is they haven't been fished much. They're sort of developing fisheries. Um, I think at the minute you don't really want to put, put all oh, your options. Yeah, 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 you always put your options and see what's working, you know. I'll just pick the one bite at a time and carry on from there. Like definitely, definitely, play. definitely. Um, I tend to fish sort of at least one rod over a good scattering of boilies. Um, and I've tended to use one rod as a sort of roving rod. Right. So the one I've got on a stick at the minute, I've moved that about. So you just keep things spots. nice and simple until you work out where spots are working. Exactly, working. exactly, yeah, exactly. Um, as I say, because these lakes haven't been fished a lot, there's no sort of sort of hard set rules as to, as to what Just do you come down, do your own thing, what you're confident in. Exactly, exactly, yeah. Well, that's another angler on the lake now. We've had a chat with Stuart. Thank you for your time, mate. Well, See you soon. All the best. Thank you. Well, we've decided to call it a day. It's uh, woke up. Uh, had plenty of rain. No fish, though, unfortunately. Uh, Lewis had a couple of tents out. Uh, I've had a few more knocks with the freedom and stuff. Uh, but if you are thinking of coming fishing here, what I would say is uh, there's great access to all the pegs. You can actually get your car right up to the peg. Um, but also, if you do want to come here, you will have to uh, gain access to the venue and that requires uh, a combination on the padlock which can be got uh, from the bailiff, uh, which I'll put the details on the website and also on the comments uh, and the information on the video. Uh, anything else, Paul? Well, just regarding rules, basically, it's common sense rules, barbed hooks, and we are fishing amongst the silkweed here, man, it is pretty thick in places. Just use common sense rigs at the end of the day. It's a spectacular place. You've got a massive lake behind you. You've got this lake in front of you. Take your pick, really. Just yeah. use common sense rules. We haven't actually ventured down to the Long Lake. Um, but as I say, it is a drive to survive. It's not too bad because you can get your car right up to the peg so you can load the car up. And uh, But yeah, it's a, a venue. It's a bit hard going. But I'd say that the rewards are worth it. Oh, yeah. definitely the rewards. I mean, I was up the tree yesterday and saw a few fish out there in front that were decent fish, but we didn't drop down on the baits. Yeah, unfortunately that's it. So me and Paul get our checkbook and pens out, and uh, that's it for another episode. So hope it all helps, and uh, bye for now. See you soon.